Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we got a lot of things to go over. First up, the head of the world's largest asset manager says Bitcoin can evolve into a global market asset. And this is a pretty great story because it goes over somebody who has over 7 trillion assets under management also. PayPal CEO Dan Schulman is getting even more bullish on digital assets where he states, Digital currencies are going to come into the mainstream. The time is now. He's going to give you a time frame and what I think it's going to be because institutions and retail are here to stay. On some mixed news, Coinbase is helping corporate companies diversify with crypto. And they were the ones it is finally revealed that helped MicroStrategy accumulate $425 million worth of Bitcoin with only minimally raising the price. So the question is asked. If they can give this much support to institutions at the drop of a hat, why are retail investors waiting weeks and sometimes over a month for customer service? Also, we're going to do an update on the XRP Spark airdrop, which is coming on December 12th. And it looks like more exchanges and wallets are getting into the game. We'll give you all that information. But first, take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is December 2nd. It is uh, 8 o'clock a.m. Texas time. Uh, getting things done early. Thank God. So what do we got today? Well, a little bit of a tumble. And that's just uh, really how cryptocurrencies digital assets go. I mean, you got to you got to expect that uh, what goes up will inevitably come down. And it'll be kind of like a two steps forward, one step back, sometimes three steps forward and 10 steps back. You just, you just don't know. It's how it works. But Bitcoin is down 1.4 and uh, dropped below that 19K uh, region. So, hey, that is what it is. Uh, Ethereum also is dropping, but uh, Ethereum 2.0 did launch uh, without any hiccups that I have heard of. So I'm very bullish on Ethereum. Look, I don't know what's going to happen with Ethereum, but I think it's going to be a real big winner. I'm very, very bullish on Ethereum plus Cardano. One of those is going to be a big winner. The other one is going to be a massive winner. I just don't know which one it is. XRP, watch out. 3.2% down. <laughs> ah, XRP holders, what are you going to do? Uh, good for you guys. I mean, still, when I say good for you guys, I mean good for us. I am also an XRP holder. I haven't sold one XRP since 2017. You know why? I'm super stubborn and that's just how it is. So uh, is that 60 cents? Who knows? It might go up to a dollar. It might go to 30 cents. I don't know. Tether is uh, sitting at that market cap of 19 billion. And look at Litecoin making massive strides in that fifth spot. And of course, that I think is the PayPal effect. PayPal came out a couple weeks ago and said, we're going to support Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. And the reason they did it was because there was no issues as far as like, what is a security, what's not a security. Well, Bitcoin and Ethereum pretty much got a pass and Bitcoin Cash kind of does too. And Litecoin, really, nothing has really been said about it. So they said, yeah, you're not a security. And then they went with those four. The next crypto that comes out on PayPal will have what I used to call the Coinbase effect and it will go to the moon. I'm waiting for that next coin. And when we go into the next article, actually the second article, we're going to see how there's going to be a lot that's going to be released on PayPal. Bitcoin Cash is down, Chainlink's down. Looks like everything's down. I mean, uh, look, it was a heck of a run. Uh, but even if you just zoom out over like the last 30 days, everybody's up massively. Uh, unless you <laughs> bought yesterday, which is what I did, actually. I bought yesterday because I dollar cost average in. I think it'll be uh, good in the long run, but uh, we'll see. And then, whoo, Ave, one of my new buys is up 14%, 30% for the week. That, I think is going to be the next decentralized finance project it's going to make huge strides so like we always like to do we want to see that's just in the us dollars let's see how it compares to going with bitcoin now what we're looking at is how you would have done if you would have invested into altcoins as opposed to just a bitcoin so bitcoin's always going to be at zero so uh everything's down i think I, maybe not ave but ethereum's down 0.8 xrp 2.2 so again if you would have just invested in Bitcoin, you would have done better. Uh, with everything else, you would have gone, let's see, any massive. Well, 1% for Monero. Monero was always up, actually. Monero looks like a pretty good buy. Tezos, NEM. NEM's always good. Filecoin, 1.1. Yep, Aave, 15%. So again, if you would have invested in Aave as opposed to Bitcoin, you would have been up massively. And 11% for Yearn. Wow, Yearn making uh, the big, huge gains. But uh, that project scares me. Synthetics, 8.1, 10.2 for Kusama. Wow. As you get down lower, you can see how you could make some huge. Zilliqa is the next project I will be taking a hard look at. Mostly because of what everybody tells me and also with Digital Dave. 
So let's see, 10% for Hedera Hashgraph, congratulations. 14% for Thor Chain, nice. Six for Lix, 1.3, 3.6, Nexo. There's something to be said about going down into the trenches as far as uh, going much farther than the top 100. Let's see, let's keep going. Uh, yeah, looks like you can make some huge gains over here. The question is, what are these projects? There's so many else out there. And even though it's good for today, I wonder what it'll be like in, I don't know, a week? two weeks, a month, only time will tell. Anyhow, that's what's going on. Let's get into today's top stories. So first up, this is a quick snippet, but it really does tell you where the market is going. Institutions are going to pull up the initial investors uh, and they're gonna bring a little bit more stability and cash flow into this market. And uh, there's no other uh, place, but when you look at one of the biggest uh, asset managers on the planet, which is BlackRock. And this is their CEO. This is Larry Fink. And he said in an interview on Tuesday, there was a conversation with the uh, former Bank of England Governor Mark Carney at the Council on Foreign Relations. And Fink said this, that uh, Bitcoin had caught his attention as well as Wall Street. He states that uh, cryptocurrency could possibly evolve into a global market asset, offering a rare positive statement. So Really what it is, if this would have happened in 2017, people would have lost their minds. They would have lost their minds because institutions weren't here. This is like commonplace. And I think these are the types of stories that we like to see and need to see to just to, to reiterate that we all made pretty much the right choice getting into this market because it's a, it was a quite of a bumpy ride for the last three years. But we saw where it could go. We believed in it. We may have, uh, you know, put dumped a bunch of money in or dollar cost average like myself. But, uh, you know, these are the days that we really relish. But really to take a look at what he said exactly, he states, these big giant moves every day. It's a thin market. Can it evolve into a global market? Possibly. And what he's really saying is all these different giant moves, we see these giant moves. It's whales can manipulate this market uh, till kingdom come because the market is so small. I mean, it's only $530 billion, which seems like a lot to the average person. But we take a look at the global economy. It's nothing. It's nothing at all. So when he talks about can it evolve into a global market? Possibly. This is just good news because it's on somebody's radar. And when you start hearing more things and more things and more things, all people are the exact same. They really don't get into it until they hear about it and do a lot more research. Even in sales, you have to see and hear about something seven to 10 times before you make a purchase. Uh, unless it's like something that you totally, you know, absolutely need. Like if you're bleeding out somewhere, you're gonna definitely just say, give me that gauze bandage. But if you're looking at some other type of asset, obviously you have to see a little bit more things a lot more times. So this is on one of the largest institution, financial institutions uh, radar. So that is good news. And this is on top, this is the CEO. Now the, the CIO, the chief investment officer, Rick Ryder, he uh, last month speculated that Bitcoin could take some of the shine off of gold, possibly one day rivaling you know, gold itself. And we had talked about this yesterday in yesterday's video where we took a look at some instances where people were selling their gold off to buy Bitcoin on top of Raul Powell, who said he got out of all of, uh, all of his gold ETFs and uh, put it all into Bitcoin and Ethereum. Also, Daniela over at uh, Stansberry Research, she said that she had reached out to people who were in the industry in the bullion markets and said that, yes, they'd seen a lot of people who were selling their gold to get into Bitcoin. Now, whether this is actual bullion or this is actual ETFs, I think it's mostly ETFs, uh, remains to be seen. But still, it still means that money is flowing out of one asset class into a better asset class. I mean, I shouldn't say better asset class, but you know what I mean. So that is what is going on with the institution side.